Calculate the variance and standard deviation for the following set of tips received by a waiter. All right, so the way we're gonna calculate standard deviation and variance is to start by calculating the variance, and then to get the standard deviation from there, we will just take the square root, because remember the connection between variance and standard deviation is that if you take the square root of variance, you end up with standard deviation. Okay, so first step is gonna to be to create a column called X, which is where you'll put all your data. So I'm just gonna write the numbers down, ignoring the units now. I'll know that the units are in dollars, right? So I'll just write down the numbers without those units. 11, 5, 7, 4, 8, 20, 9, 10, and 12. All right, and next to that, I'm going to create another column called x squared. So I'll square 11, and I'll get 121. I'll square 5, and I'll get 25. I'll square 7, and I'll get 49. I will square 4 and get 16. I will square 8 and get 64. I'll square 20 and get 400. I'll square 9 and get 81. I'll square, one, I'll square 10, sorry, and get 100. And I'll square 12 and get 144. Okay, the next step I'd like you to take is sort of a pre-step. We could have done this first. I want you to count how many data values we started with. So in other words, looking up here, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 data values. So n is 9 here. Okay, let's keep that in mind. We're going to need that number later. All right, so what have we done so far? We counted up how many values we had and called that n. That's our sample size. We then created a column where we just listed the data values that we were given. And then we squared all of those values and put them into a column called x squared. The next step is to sum those columns. In other words, add all the numbers together in each column. Okay, so here we'll do that. 11 plus 5 plus 7 plus 4 plus 8 plus 20 plus 9 plus 10 plus 12. Okay, so just give a quick look to make sure you put everything in correctly and then press enter. And you have your answer, 86, that's the first sum. Okay, and let's add the other column together now. So we'll have 121 plus 25 plus 49 plus 16 plus 64 plus 400 plus 81 plus 100, plus 144. And when we're done, we get 1,000. And again, just check to make sure you entered everything correctly. Okay, so now the next step is pretty straightforward. Basically what we're gonna do next is name these sums. In other words, what name would you give this quantity symbolically? Well, I would call it a sum. It was a sum, we added up the column. And because the column was called x, I'm going to call that the sum of x. And what name would you give this value? Following the same pattern, I would call it the sum of x squared. Now once we've named both of those columns, the next step is to plug that information into our formula for the variance. So the variance is s squared is equal to n times the summation of x squared minus parentheses the summation of x squared divided by n times n minus 1. Remember, this is the computational version of the sample variance. Another thing to keep in mind is that you are not required normally to memorize this formula. It is usually provided to you on the exam, so you don't have to actually commit it to memory. You just have to write it down and then start plugging things in. So do we know what n is? I think we do. We said that n was 9, right? So we said that n here was 9. So s squared will be equal to 9 times this number. Do we know what this number is? Sure, the sum of x squared is 1,000, we said, right? We said that that was just 1,000. Minus the sum of x squared. Do we know the sum of x? I think we do. We said that it was 86. So we'll have 86 squared divided by n, which was 9, times n minus 1, which is just 8. And the rest we can plug right into our calculator. 
So we'll have 9 times 1,000, which of course is 9,000, minus 86 squared. Notice how I'm going to do the top part of this first separately. I get 1,604 all over 9 times 8. Now 9 times 8 is 72, but even if you didn't know that, you could just enter it into your calculator, right? So again, if you were going to do it in your calculator, you just do that separately. 9 times 8 is 72, and then you have 1604, right, divided by 72. And when you're done, you get 22.278, rounded off to three decimal places. However, since we're going to use this value down the road, I'm not going to actually round it off. So I'm going to say s squared is equal to 22.277777, so on and so forth, right? And then that's our variance. Now you could round it off for the variance. You could round it off to 22.28 or 22.278, whatever you want. However, before we do that, I want to go ahead and calculate s. So remember, s is just the square root of the variance. So since the variance was 22.277777 dot dot dot, I'll just put all of that under the square root and get my answer for s. So if you want to put it under square root, you just open up your square root, bring that number down from the previous line, press enter, and you get 4.719. So approximately 4.719. All right, so that's your S. This is your variance. And again, if you want to round it, you can round it at this point now that it's all done. But in the end, you have your two solutions. Now here's the tricky thing you want to remember. The units on the 22.778, that's actually in dollars squared units. So it's 22.28 dollars squared, which of course makes no sense. I don't know what a dollar squared is. Whereas the units on this one is simply dollars, and if we rounded it off to 4.72, it's 4.72 dollars. So in my opinion, the standard deviation makes a lot more sense because the units are the same as the original units that you had for your original data set, right? So it has the same units as the original measurements. All right, but there it is, dollar squared on the variance and just dollars for standard deviation.